Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So as you can see, we are in Ibis Paint today. And the reason being is that I wanted to give the animation feature a go in Ibis Paint. So you can see at the bottom of this menu, there's kind of like an animation little section. But before we get onto that, I wanted to show you a little bit of my preliminary sketches that I did in my sketchbook so I could plan out what exactly I wanted to animate. But I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more once we get into actually drawing the frames. So to kind of set up, you can see that there's different resolutions or canvas sizes here and there are some that are locked due to me not having the subscription mode. I'm also going to let the frame rate be the same as whatever is the default which is 12 frames per second and we can actually change that a little bit later in the settings. So you can see animation settings are right there and this little plus sign you can use to add more frames. So I went ahead and actually experimented a tiny bit so that I could get familiar with how to use the frames in Ibis Paint. I went ahead also to unlock the brushes so I have access to whatever tools I wanted to use and I'm going to kind of flip-flop between I think two or three brushes while I'm working from today's illustration or animation. Yeah, animation. <laughs> so right off the bat, I'm going to change the background color to be more of a gray just because I really don't like looking at a blank white canvas. I think it's just too hard on the eyes and it's just easier for also for me to film the screen. So I went ahead and made that gray and I'm going to go ahead and start to kind of block in my initial rough sketches for the frames that I wanted to do. So you can see that once I added a new frame, we have onion skin turned on and I have the previous frame kind of visible in red. And then my new frame right now that I'm drawing in is done in black. So as we move along, we can kind of see what was the previous frame, which allows you to kind of make a smoother animation or transition between your different frames. Now I'm going to preface this with saying that I am not very well versed in animation, animating, anything like that. I just kind of dabble here and there. And I feel like it's gonna show a lot in today's process, so do bear with me. I'm not like very proficient with it, and I'm just gonna try to do my best with what I know at the moment. So yeah. So while I'm still kind of in the rough sketching phase, let me talk about who I'm drawing and what I'm drawing and my kind of plan moving forward for the animation. So I knew I didn't really want to have a long animation and my initial plan was to actually sync up audio to the animation because I've done this before very crudely with 17 animations that I've done in the past. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a Genshin Impact character because they have their lines voiced and I have access to those voices if I needed to. And Fremine has some shorter ones. Now let me look in my sketchbook really quick for the line that I was going to use. So I believe the quote that I was going to use is him saying, I'd rather be diving in the sea. And I believe this is when he's being in more of like a windy area. So he has kind of a different line for that. And I thought it'd be simple to animate that, but I did not have the patience to do that. Like lip flaps plus like a moving animation at the same time in Ibis Paint, just because I feel like my patient runs quite thin whenever I'm animating. So I feel like it's a little bit quicker whenever I work on my tablet doing that. And I have access to the audio like at my fingertips versus me doing the entire animation, try to sync up lip flaps a little bit later. So I'll talk about other ways you can do animation if you um, are kind of like on a budget or just wanna use like free programs or whatever. So I'll get into that a little bit later. So one part I run into when doing the animation is the head size getting a little bit smaller and I didn't realize that I accidentally shrunk the head before rotating it. So I initially already made the second frame a lot smaller than the first frame. So if you match up my first frame to my last frame, you can see that the head actually goes very small compared to the initial side profile, which is a kind of very bad inconsistency to have. I feel like you don't want things squishing and squashing if they don't need to be. So. Yeah, that's kind of a mistake on my part. So Fremenet's head might be a little bit too small by the end, uh, but yeah, we can't we can't fix it at this point. Uh, but maybe in the future, I'll try harder to do something a little bit more elaborate and actually take my time and patience working on an animation that's a little bit more polished because this one I still find very rough, if anything. And I feel like I made a few cop-out decisions to make the process a little bit shorter. So. 
instead of doing the audio where I'm gonna do like lip syncing for it, I'll do that for a different video maybe in the future if you wish to see it. But I decided that I would still stick with the concept of him getting blown by the wind. So we'll have him starting kind of profile view and then as he's getting hit by the wind, he'll suddenly turn, duck down a little bit and then recompose himself to normal with a, like a little bit of a sigh. Hopefully it'll make sense once you guys will see the actual sketches later on because at some point I'll be showing you more and more of when I start to run through the animation after each step. So how I've broken down the steps for the animation in terms of planning is that I like to do a rough sketch to plan out the general either composition and movement and I did not do any in-between frames to help make things transition a little bit smoother nor did I really play with the fact that you can change the duration of each frame if you wish to have a little bit more of anticipation or if you want something to go a lot quicker. So usually I would take this into consideration when doing things like lip flaps, blinking, all that in a different program. But today, I wanted to keep things simple, so I kept everything at the same pace, and there's probably some places where I needed some in-between frames to help make it a smoother transition. Also, you would have saw that I tried to resize Fermanet's head to be a little bit bigger, but apparently I feel like the facial proportions between him turning from profile view to front view is still very off, so I do apologize if it looks kind of weird. I've done something similar where I've turned Maseki, my OC, from profile to front view, but I feel like the proportions on that was a little bit more accurate than how I did from an A. So there are going to be some frames as well where I duplicated the frames and just shifted some things around, changed hand positioning so that, you know, there's a little bit more consistency for the face, but I'll run into a different problem a little bit later. So right off the bat, I can tell you immediately that in terms of the animation feature between Ibis Paint and Procreate, I feel like there's benefits to both, but one thing I really do like from Ibis Paint's version of the animation is the fact that every new frame that you make, so you can see the frames are at the very bottom, automatically kind of make their own, I don't know if you want to call it like a canvas or a, its own group. Um, if that's like a fair comparison to Procreate, it basically, like each frame you can have their own layers automatically made once you add a frame. So it makes it a lot easier for layer organization. And you don't really have to worry about flipping back and forth too often if you're switching between uh, one folder to another or anything like that. So I do find that's definitely a lot quicker and much more easier to navigate than Procreate's way of in order to make a new frame, you have to kind of put it into a group if you wish to use more layers because in Procreate, if you make a new layer, that's automatically a new frame. So if you want to make a color layer, you have to group your color and your lines together into a folder and then that folder is now considered a frame. So as I was kind of rambling about the different uh, layer function, I guess, or the animation frames, we have already moved on to the line work. So that's kind of like my third step in terms of working on animation like this. I know there's like different ways people approach this. There's some things I'm not going to do that I know a lot of professionals do because one, I don't think I have the correct knowledge in order to utilize them to the full potential, but also I didn't really want to spend as much time on this as I probably could have if I did an animation just for fun. I feel like whenever I do things for like uh, video or for posting for social media, there is still a little bit of a time limit that I give myself. Uh, I think it's like due to added pressure rather than, you know, if you did it for your own enjoyment, you kind of take your own time. But I decided to use kind of like a felt pen kind of brush for the line work, meaning that this one has zero line weight and it doesn't taper at the end. So it's kind of like just a nice consistent line weight throughout the entirety of the line work. And I wanted that because Sometimes whenever I do line work and I have, let's say, the hand, I don't want the hand to be like, oh, maybe it's thicker line weight in one frame suddenly gets like super thin. So to eliminate that, I might as well just not put any line weight at all. And I'll rely a little bit more on the coloring and the, I guess, like shading and things to bring everything together because this might look a little bit too, I don't know, blocky in a way. 
it might work for like a lot of other people's styles, but I'm not sure if it really works with mine or maybe I'm just not used to not using a lot of line weight when it comes to line work like this. So I'm basically going to be not showing you guys the entire process for every frame. So I did try my best to kind of splice it up so that you see a little bit of the rough sketching for the frames, a little bit of the sketching, and then now we are on the line work. And after that, we'll start to kind of pick up the pace and we'll start doing the coloring. I'll do the background as well and then some final touches for a little bit more of like atmosphere, if anything, and kind of a little bit of my cheat of making something look a little bit more polished than it actually is, which like I said, might be a cop out, but uh, maybe in the future, I will spend a little bit more time learning more about animation so I can do it a little bit more, not professionally, just a little bit better, more proficiently, maybe is a better way of putting it. Because I feel like for between frame two and three, there might have been too big of a jump and then between three and four there might be too big of a jump so some in between frames would have been nice to have a cleaner kind of transition between the frames but i also think like because i don't really think about i guess like movement if that makes sense movement of objects or how things work if you have something like bouncing back or anything like that where there's like you know um I don't know what's called i guess like before impact then impact and then kind of like the recoil so you know if you have hair in the wind it will act a little bit differently than some other objects and i feel like i don't have a full good grasp of how things would move so some of the stuff might look a little bit janky or not consistent so i tried my best to make sure things didn't look super off where it's like off-putting but you can see here this is kind of what i have in terms of the animation i think i changed the frame rate already to six frames per second or five frames per second because i have so little amount of frames i didn't really want to make the animation go by super quickly that or i could have add more frames and individually kind of slowed down or um, speed up certain frames so that it would move a little bit more smoothly and in time with some of the other movement. I also do think the hair looks a little bit weird in some places, but I think it's also me struggling to draw Fremine. Maybe if I drew a different character, it would have been a little bit easier to keep things kind of consistent. Also, because Fremine does have his hair in front of his eyes, I decided to just leave the eyes as normal and then kind of erase around between the hair and the eye so that we can kind of make a transparent gap. Also, I think at this point, I am kind of finished with the line work and I'm gonna go ahead and try to think how I'm going to section things off. So I want the background to be separate from the character. So I'm putting a blank kind of teal I don't know, like a, a pale pastel kind of teal color in the background and having a gradation of more of a softer yellow going across so that we can have a little bit of a light source and the background won't be as boring if I leave it all completely one color. So you can see that there's kind of like a gigantic pink background on some of the frames as we move along and the reason being is that it's the onion skin having the effect so technically it's kind of like that red outline whenever i had the initial sketch just laid out but because the background basically covers the entirety of the canvas it's just reading as a gigantic pink square i went ahead and copied it and then i am pasting it for each individual frame so that's something i like in procreate which i believe someone informed me that you can actually do a separate background for your entire animation and you don't have to copy and paste it to every frame or put it into every group so it's kind of nice but but it's not really like a deal breaker or anything for animating like this. I also decided to switch up how I was color filling everything. So initially I was gonna color each frame individually one by one, but instead I thought it would actually be faster if I pick one color and go through each kind of individual frame and just fill that color in, just because it's easier than me eye dropping every few frames and going back and forth from the previous frame to always like get the color correct bucket it, go back to the previous frame, back to the current frame, bucket it. It's easier for me to just pick the current color like I, like I have right here, which is kind of like the gold color. And then I will go to every frame across, kind of filling that in all at once. So we kind of fill section by section 
for every frame until basically everything is filled completely. There are going to be some areas that I might miss and some parts I don't really fix, but at the end, when I have the finished animation done, that's basically just the finished version, and mm, it's not my favorite, but I do think it turned out kind of cute, and like I said, maybe in the future, I'll try doing some more ambitious kind of animations in the future if I get more into animating, because I think it would be fun doing an animation where I sync it to the actual voice lines in the game, just because voice lines or just like sound and voicing for animation I think is just like some another way to bring something to life in a fun way because when I used to do the kind of like crude animations I did for 17 I would base the animation off of the sound which is kind of fun so yeah you can kind of get creative with whatever the expressions is or like how you want to frame each little part that's something I usually had fun with because if I didn't want to draw something in the same view as it was when the video came out with the original audio, I could definitely just change it up and make something completely different. But back to the actual drawing process. So I went ahead and copy and pasted kind of this little blue color over top of Fremine, um, because I wanted to set this to multiply and then layer clip it to just the colors of Fremine. So that way we can kind of add a lighting to him and I'm going to use this to my advantage to erase the kind of shadow and reveal the color as underneath to kind of create a little bit of rim lighting and I think this is kind of like my cop-out way of making things a little bit more not polished in a way but a little bit more finished because I'm adding a little bit of shadows a little bit of highlights in a very flat looking way but I'm not individually like basically placing shadows for everything I've also forgot to add some of the other details there is definitely a lot of things I missed on his outfit so if you're a Fremine main I do apologize I do really love his design but Genshin characters designs in terms of just the amount of detail is just very rough. It's a little painful to draw at times unless you've drawn the character like a gajillion times, but I feel like even if you have, you probably wouldn't draw every detail probably 100% correct. So yeah, I decided that I would just leave it because I know there's definitely a lot of stuff on his kind of shirt coat area that I definitely missed out on. But at this point, I'm just trying my best to actually finish the drawing at this point. I probably should have talked about this earlier, but uh, before filming the voiceover for today's video, I was actually at my friend's house. So me and two of my friends, we've been friends since like uh, end of middle school. One of them I knew from the beginning of middle school, but basically our friendship got stronger right after middle school. And I've been friends with these girls for so long, but I went to her house and we were having kind of like, we exercised together, then we cooked food, we had dessert, and like we just talked for hours from like 4 p.m. till 10 p.m. And I was playing with the one, one of my friend's cats and he likes sitting on me and like cuddling next to me. I think it's because I have such a warm body that he really liked the heat, but I didn't have this realization, but it's fairly consistent now. I think I'm allergic to her cat or just cats in general, but hers a little bit more intensely just because he's very cuddly, so I'm in his proximity a lot more. Because my other friend, she has two cats, but I never really had this issue. I would have like a little bit of like a runny nose or like a stuffy nose, but I always thought it's because like my immune system is just absolute garbage, but also like I always joke that I'm always sick because I always have a runny nose, I have a stuffy nose, I'm always sneezing, but I think truly I am allergic to cats, so that's kind of sad. I feel like it's a little bit in a mild way, but next time I'm gonna visit them, which is probably gonna be on the following Monday because we have a concert to attend and I might see her cat again. I might just bring like reacting or whatever it's called. I never really had to buy like allergy medications, but I might have to because this time, because he was very cuddly with me, I think I sound very congested. If I don't, phew, that hopefully I don't sound congested during this voiceover. But yeah, my nose is running. I feel congested. I have like a slight uh, headache, probably from how stuffy my nose is currently. 
So, yeah, it kind of bums me out that I'm potentially allergic to cats, but I think it won't stop me from potentially adopting a cat in the future. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, back to the illustration. I decided that I would alpha lock the line art for each frame, and I went ahead, took a airbrush, and kind of did a very kind of like muted soft brown over the entirety of where Framine is hit by a light as well as his face. Then after that, I went ahead and used kind of like a dark purpley blue and then a lighter blue to do the eyes because I didn't want them to be brown. And then after that, I will also do his eyebrows, eyebrows, eyebrows to be kind of like a dark black or not dark black, dark brown or black so that we can make them all consistent too. And I know the gradation isn't going to be consistent throughout all the frames. I do apologize about that. I wish I sectioned them off in a way so that I could color each individual part uh, more accurately. But I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to animation, so I did not do that. So after I finished that, we can move on to kind of like the last little effect I guess I'm going to do to kind of... I don't know, soften everything up. So I went ahead and made a group or a folder for each individual frame. I went ahead and duplicated that folder, then flattened it so that we kind of have a duplicate. But I don't want to get rid of my original set of line work, the multiply layer, and the color because I just, you know, just in case if something happens. So I'll take the flattened layer, I'll go into our effects, I'll go into blur, We'll go to kind of Gaussian blur and then we'll go ahead and kind of change the blurriness to about 3% or whatever the scale is on that. And I will lower the opacity of that kind of flattened layer to about 50%. So I'm going to do this on time lapse so you can see that I'm doing this for every individual layer so that we kind of get this little bit of a blurry hazy effect on top of everything and I'm trying to combat the fact that I don't really like the line quality that I had and there's some areas that are a little bit I don't know, it, the, the way that the bucket tool filled in some of my frames were a little bit patchy or a little bit pixely. So I wanted to do this to kind of soften literally everything. And I think it would have been smarter for me to put the background in it too when I blurred it so that everything was super soft. But you'll see the result at the very end and I think it looks really cute. I kind of wish I saved the version of it with the effects off but I don't think I'm going to include that at the end of the video because I feel like the softer version just looks a little bit better. It also kind of gives it that old quality in a sense where it's kind of fuzzy, not very clear. Kind of how like old cell animation kind of looks because things were, I guess, like scanned instead of like directly done on the computer. So Fremini is done and I forgot to talk about um, some other ways you can do animation on the computer rather than um, in Ibis Paint or Procreate, so maybe I'll go over that in a different video because I used to do some really simple ones just using a drawing program and a video editor. So let's go ahead and go back out of this canvas and we'll go ahead and look at the animation right here by tapping the top. But you can see the kind of quality is a lot softer, it's just not as sharp, so I think this looks kind of cuter. So yeah, I'll add the finished version at the very end and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!